In a military encampment located on a forest clearing, a girl with cat ears named Leon Michelli asks her general Godwin if the troops are advancing as planned. He reports that despite some delays due to rain, they're still on schedule for tomorrow's siege. All the soldiers are well rested and ready to go. This pleases Leon Michelli, who's eager to once again bring defeat to the dog princess of Biscotti. Meanwhile, in the aforementioned Biscotti Republic, a dog-eared council holds a meeting around a table. They discuss the impending attack on the their base and how it's a surefire loss. Missing some key members such as Sir Brioche and Yukikaze highly limits their combat ability. With tensions rising up, especially from the passionate Eclair, Princess Milhiore decides to use their ace in the hole. It's time to summon a hero to aid them in battle. Back in Kinokawa, Japan, 13-year-old Shinku is preparing for school when his childhood friend Becky calls his name outside his window. After hurriedly preparing his bag and putting on his shoes, he aerobatically jumps off his balcony, does a flip in midair, and catches his bag as he lands. Don't try this at home, kids. Becky doesn't even bat an eyelid. As the two converse on the way to school, it's revealed that Shinku loves athletics and usually parkours his way to school. On the other hand, Becky walks like the rest of us. Shinku discusses his plans of returning to his hometown in England over the spring break. There, he'll practice for an aerobatic tournament called Iron Athletics, happening as early as July. Last year, he only got second place, so he'll aim for the top spot this time. When they arrive at school, Shinku invites Becky and her family to their holiday home for the last three days of spring break. The twin-tailed girl accepts pretty much right away. After all, it's the perfect place to watch the cherry blossoms bloom. As the two part ways, they're blissfully unaware of being spied on. Now all the students are in the gym listening to the principal's farewell speech before spring break. Well, all except Shinku that is. The teachers let him go since he needs to catch the flight to his hometown. After getting his bag from the classroom, instead of using the stairs like a normal person, he jumps out the window towards the ground below. While he's in midair, a dog dog impales a dagger into the ground and this opens a portal right in his landing zone. There's no avoiding it now. After falling into the portal, he is transported to the land of Flanyard. It's a place inhabited by furry… er… people who have animal ears and tails. He drops like a comet and falls right to the center of a summoning circle. There, he's greeted by Milhiore, introducing herself as the princess of the Biscotti Republic. And boy is he shaken by her beauty and those ears. Anyway, she thanks Shinku for responding to her heroic summoning. But before she can explain the situation further, fireworks begin signaling that the battle has already begun. There's no time. She summarizes the situation in one liner. Her country is currently at war and needs his help. Meanwhile, Leon Michelli and her army break through the city gates and march deeper into Biscotti territory. No time to waste then. Milhiora invites Shinku to ride her Serukuru, a large, colorful bird that walks on two legs. Think of an ostrich. As the two move towards the destination, Milhiora finally has time to give a proper explanation explanation. Biscotti is often at war with its neighboring country Galette. Due to Biscotti's continued losses, many of their strongholds have already fallen to the Galette Lion Army led by the invincible commander Leon Michelli. Now their opponent is after their castle. All this talk of war makes Shinku very nervous. He admits that he's not a knight and only your typical middle school student. Milhiore assures him that she knows all about his special powers. When they finally arrive, Shinku finally gets a proper view of the battle. If you can even call it that, it's basically an obstacle course straight from the game shows on TV. It even comes complete with commentary, festive fireworks, and a floating projector screen. Having broken through the fort, the lion army is now at Biscotti's famous defensive lake, but none of the lion troops are getting through. So now, one of their captains decides to send all the lion troops in at once. While most of them are stopped by a Claire, who uses her two daggers and insanely OP powers to cut down several enemy forces and turn them into small balls of fur, some still pass through. Thankfully, her teammate Lauren uses his lightning dagger to eliminate the remaining troops before they can fully cross. Upon seeing the so-called battle, Shinku asks if this is how they really fight. Milhiora confirms that nobody really gets hurt during battles, as they abide by rules set for the entire continent. There are even medical staff ready to go in case someone gets injured. The aforementioned rules are heavily enforced to ensure that everyone fights fairly. It is then up to the event hosts to make sure that there are no injuries or accidents. Not to mention, these events are not only used to negotiate with other countries, but are also a way for the citizens to enjoy sports and competition healthily. Now holding his hand, Milhiore explains how their current losing streak has impacted troop morale. They're set to lose their castle at this rate, and that would be very… sad. Shinku checks one more time if he really is the one they wanted to summon. After that one last confirmation, he finally accepts the role of hero. Milhiore is thrilled by his decision and quickly flies them to the castle to announce his arrival. This shocks everyone on the battlefield, friend and foe alike. The maids get him into his new outfit in less than 30 seconds flat. 
Shinku appears on the battlefield with some flashy My Hero Academia drip and even a new weapon in the form of a staff. And for good measure, he even does a pose for dramatic effect. With the appearance of the hero, everyone can't wait to see what he's capable of, although one girl expresses a valid point. Does Shinku even know the rules in this battle? Princess Milhiore assures her that Shinku was informed of all the rules before he set out. Back on the battlefield, Shinku confirms the rules with Loran to see if he got everything right. And when it becomes clear that his knowledge is up to par, Loran asks Shinku one important question. What does he think of Princess Milhiore? It's simple. Shinku thinks she's a kind and wonderful princess. Oh, and she's really cute too. This answer pleases the now smiling Loran, gaining Shinku a pat to the back. Now it's time to get to business. As Shinku begins fighting enemy troops, he mentally recalls the rules once again. Dealing a big enough blow to the enemy knocks them out and turns them into a harmless pet ball. The same effect can be achieved by knocking out by placing a hand on their head or their back. Since it's riskier, this gives them more points compared to just knocking them out normally. Oh, Shinku's literally learning on the fly. His quick reflexes and unrivaled speed are doing him very well here. As a result, he makes quick work of the enemy troops, using his staff, legs, and hands to take out an entire platoon of soldiers. The commentators are shocked at how quickly he's dismantling all his foes. It just looks effortless. With the gap in points quickly dwindling away, Shinku gets to a vantage point and is amazed by the sight of the battlefield. As this happens, life is going on as normal back in Japan. Rebecca expectedly sees this as just another day. Her classmates try to tease her about the Shinku, but she dismisses him as just another immature gymnastic staff fighting addict. Back in Flanyard, Shinku continues to garner oohs and ahs for his skills. This causes Leon Michelli to take notice, pick up her weapon, and excitedly set out to meet him on the battlefield. But not everyone is happy about the hero's arrival. Eclair continues to defend her station while reiterating how the hero is unnecessary. As yet another wave of enemy soldiers rushes at her, she once again uses her powers to obliterate them with one explosive strike. Shockingly, one opponent is able to get past and lunges towards her. It's too late now, until Shinku arrives just in time to save her. What was that about the hero again, Eclair? The moment they meet, Shinku is immediately amazed by Eclair's emblem arts. This reminds him of the pre-battle prep when Princess Milhiore explained what these were. Essentially, mixing spirit energy from Flonyard's environment with one's own life force leads to the ability to use magic. She also gifted him with a ring that could manifest any weapon he wanted, and he turned it into a staff. The princess then informed Shinku that Eclair is an expert when it comes to emblem arts and abilities, so he asks her to be his mentor. The girl is flattered by the compliment and agrees to teach him on the spot. As another platoon charges at them, Eclair decides to lead by example. Our boy's fortunately a fast learner so he catches on quickly. The two finally unleash their emblem arts, combining into one massive attack that vaporizes an entire wave of soldiers. Even the teacher's a bit impressed, but the battle isn't finished just yet. A strong arrow pierces the air and heads straight for them. It's so powerful that both Eclair and Shinku are sent flying back by its force. Now down on the ground, the two look up to see a cat-eared woman holding a bow while straddling a humongous bird. It's the boss herself, Leon Michelli, riding her Aiki Toma. She was expecting more from the summoned hero who's now in a pitiful state. Afterwards, she introduces herself as the ruler of the Galette Lion Dominion and the Kings of Beasts. Eclair calls her princess, but is daftly corrected as the appropriate title is Your Excellency. With her attack done and introductions finished, Leon Michelli then proceeds to finish the rest of the obstacle course and win the battle. But Shinku and Claire aren't willing to surrender so easily, they struggle to get up, only for usual anime shenanigans to happen. Shinku accidentally places his hand on Eclair's Jigglypuffs, to which he then realizes she's actually a girl. Bro, it wasn't obvious? Of course, this act angers Eclair, leading her to enact some well-deserved friendly fire on her dense accomplice. Despite everyone's best efforts, no one is able to stop Leon Michelli from quickly crossing the obstacles and taking out every soldier she meets. Now only one obstacle is keeping her from total victory, the super slippery wall. Both sides' troops are at a fierce stalemate when Leon Michelli and her bird tip the scales. Surprisingly, Shinku and Eclair catch up to try to stop her with attacks of their own. It's obvious they have no teamwork yet as Your Excellency is able to easily dodge them, causing the two to collide in midair and get hit by a beam. And thanks to some anime shenanigans working, they land atop each other once again, although this time, Eclair's armor has magically come off. As the two bicker, again, Leon Michelli uses her emblem art to make meteors erupt from the ground. Countless soldiers are decommissioned forcing Shinku and Eclair to fall back. But Leon Michelli isn't done yet. She straight up nukes the entire place with a massive explosion, knocking everyone out around her, friend and foe. It's an overwhelming victory. Until it isn't. Just when the battle seems to be over, Shinku and Eclair are seen falling from the sky. It's revealed that Eclair was able to use her emblem arts right before the explosion to carry both of them high up in the air, far from the attack's range. Knowing that they can't beat this combatant in a one-on-one -on -one fight, Eclair admits there's no way to win unless they work together. 
While still in midair, Eclair kicks Shinku like a football towards Leon Michelli. Shinku prepares to use the momentum to attack, but even this isn't enough as she sends him reeling back. With both him and Eclair surrounding their opponent, they go for a simultaneous attack. These are blocked at first, but they're finally able to break Leon Michelli's weapons, leaving her vulnerable. This turns the tides of battle. The two attack again, this time breaking most of her armor. At this point, Leon Michelli concedes. Although her surrender doesn't technically end the battle, her defeat as captain now gives Biscotti the needed points to claim an insurmountable lead. It's more or less a sure win, and thus, Biscotti finally receives its first win after a long drought. During an in-battle interview, Leon Michelli praises the hero's skill but swears to win the next battle. Now she instructs the film crew to point their cameras at Eclair. All of a sudden, everything that remained of Eclair's clothing suddenly burst into shreds, and footage reveals that Shinku's attack affected her as well. This unrivaled view fills the battlefield with soldiers' triumphant roars and bellows. There are no sides, no teams, no rivalries here, only men united by views of great culture. And while Leon Michelli leaves the battlefield, Eclair is busy punishing Shinku for his costly mistake. With the battle finally won, they receive their prize, the right to hold a festival on the battlegrounds. The princess decides to dedicate the festivities to song and dance. They even have a song list prepared. While Shinku is informed of the princess's almighty singing talent, he asks if he can go back to his world first to inform his parents of his whereabouts. Sadly, Shinku finds out that once summoned, a hero can never return or even contact their homeworld. That's the main reason why heroes are rarely summoned in the first place, and it's now clear that Princess Milhiore wasn't aware of this. Our boy sweating buckets! He's now permanently in a new world with no escape. With the battle finally over, Biscotti celebrates their first defensive win in a long time. Everyone's up in celebration and it's an infectious, festive mood. For the most part, our boy Shinku is still sulking over his inability to return home. It's gotten so bad that Lauren's forced to cover for him in the post-battle interview. Although Milhiore is worried by Shinku's helpless situation, she still has a lot of royal matters to attend to. She is a princess after all, greeting the soldiers, finalizing the ceasefire with Leon Michelli, interviews, and festival rehearsals are just the tip of the iceberg. Thankfully, she's assigned chief researcher Elmar on the case. This girl's currently regretting how she failed to disclose the cons of summoning before they did it. As a result, she feels that sending Shinku back to his world is her responsibility. Meanwhile, Shinku's still in the town plaza lamenting his entrapment in another universe. He can't even send anyone a message with his phone. Eclair doesn't waste time in scolding him for accepting the summoning despite not knowing the full details. Now present is a summoning circle beneath the dog, Tatsumaki, with some text that says, step here to be summoned. Don't step to not get summoned. Simple. This sends Shinku into a slight rage as he blames the dog for putting a portal in his landing zone. He basically had no choice. Of course, Eclair doesn't care. At least the research team is trying to figure things out for him. At the very least, while he's there, he should try to live life a little. Eclair then passes on a generous pouch of coins as a reward for his performance in battle. His surprised reaction prompts her to explain the mechanics. The amount of money given to a soldier is a gauge of how much they contributed to the fight. And although some soldiers fight for fun, some join to at least recoup their participation fees. Our boy's still dumbfounded, so she takes him around town to show him the ropes. Although battles are essentially tools of negotiation for nations, they're also considered major events held by organizations. So sometimes, battles between smaller villages take place as well. Before a battle commences, the representatives gather participation fees from the soldiers and their governments. The total amount is then gathered into what's called a battle fund. When the battle is concluded, this fund is split into 60% for winners and 40% for losers. That's shockingly nice. And as decreed by a continental agreement, at least half of the prize money will go to reward the soldiers who participated, while the remainder will be the country's profit from battle. This is used to build hospitals, erect fortresses, pay public servants, and protect the kingdom. Taxaton 101 kids! After this detailed breakdown, Shinku asks if there have been more conventional, violent wars before where people have actually perished. Eclair explains that Flonyard's life force currently protects most of its citizens even on the battlefields, but crimes, beast attacks, and demon wars still remain a dangerous threat in desolate locations. All this only elicits an I see from Shinku, leading the girl to believe he hasn't understood a single thing. But for now, their next order of business is to meet with Elmar. Upon arrival, the latter apologizes profusely as she hasn't found a way to send Shinku back yet. However, her eyes glimmer with hope when Shinku explains that he just has to be back three days before spring break ends. In time for his trip with Becky. That's in 16 days. Ample time for research and development. At the same time, Shinku asks Elmar if she could get his phone some reception so he can communicate with the other side. Luckily, Elmar pulls out a contraption that's said to magnify signal waves. She invented this futuristic machine when she was five, and now it's used all over the continent. Genius! Shinku jumps for joy when he sees signal bars appear. The first thing he does is call his friend Becky. While trying to sound perfectly normal. He assures her that he's okay and informs her that he might not be able to 
answer her calls for a while. It's not a cause for concern. She's really looking forward to the trip to his vacation home. Now it's time to call his parents. But before that, Elmar begs to take apart his smartphone to examine its components further. Understandably, Shinku's hesitant since it may never work again afterwards. They end up in a wild goose chase over this snazzy piece of tech. While the two are busy arguing about phone warranties and such, Eclair contacts Lauren. She reports that not only was Shinku able to contact his home, but he's also resolved to live a positive life during his stay. This includes participating in battle, giving them a better chance of winning. Lauren is happy to hear this and also shares that their two strongest knights, Dalkian and Yukikaze, will return in two days. Eclair and Elmar are overjoyed to be reunited with such dependable comrades. Something then draws their attention. Several strange-looking transparent frogs. Eclair lectures him on earth spirits, creatures whose presence implies that they're on rich, fertile land. On the other side of town, Lauren updates Melhiore on Shinku's increasingly amicable relationship with both Elmar and Eclair. She's glad to hear this, as well as the fact that he'll be attending the concert she spent a lot of time rehearsing for. Although she is glad that Shinku was able to talk to his family and friends, she still feels a bit guilty for summoning him without knowing that he can't return. There must be some way to properly apologize to him. Would patting his head work? Other thoughts cross her mind during practice. Thoughts like, what's the best way to reward Eclair for performing well during the battle? And why has Leon Michelli love war and hate my music now, to name a few? They used to be really close, and the latter would always comment that she enjoyed her singing. However, for some reason, the commander has taken more interest in battles rather than her singing as of late, which worries her. Speak of the devil, Leon Michelli's drinking the night away in her tent. While she's still unwilling to attend the concert, she refuses the idea of sabotaging it. Does this girl have a heart? As the night comes, Shinku heads straight to the bat to freshen up before the concert. And just like the dense anime protagonist that he is, he completely misses the occupied by Princess Milhiora signage by the door. Obviously, it leads to an unexpected, underdressed interaction. At least Shinku still has some trunks on, but the same can't be said about the princess. The two quickly get embarrassed by the situation. Milhiore immediately tries to cover herself while Shinku clumsily falls into the bathwater. To not prolong this awkward situation any further, Milhiore decides to leave Shinku to some solitary bath time. Right before she leaves though, she asks if they can meet up after the concert to discuss the summoning and the future ahead. Alright, it's a deal. Now time to enjoy this open-aired bath under the starry constellations. In just one day, he got summoned to a strange world, needed to fight in a competition, and then discovered that he can't return home. Or maybe he can. That's a lot to take in. Yep, this R&R session was a must. But out of all those things, only one thing's in his mind right now. Is he in the girl's bathroom? Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.